What is going on YouTube? My name is Adam. I am coach of the Maryland Blue Crabbies and we are back for the beginning of the United Battlers Association Season 4. Um, we're just going to go over the team builder. Uh, this is about a week after the draft finished up. Um, I do apologize for the late upload, but you know, life is crazy and sometimes the, the YouTube priority kind of falls to the lower end of the ladder as far as priorities go. Um, so it's not going to be as fancy as our GPL uh, team builder was, but we're going to do our best and uh, we'll show you guys what we ended up with for season four. Uh, without too much further ado, uh, we did have the option to franchise this year, uh, which was something really, really cool. Uh, so of course I had to go with my boy, trust me daddy, the Victini. Uh, I figured that this gives me so much versatility as far as sets go. I mean, it's a flat 100 in base stats across the board. Uh, we can make it chunky, we can make it super offensive in either category. It has access to a really versatile move pool, and it does a lot of damage to a lot of things ranging uh, across the board. Uh, we saw how much it put, it, how much work it put in last season, and there was really no reason for me to not pick it back up as long as you know it was sitting there I had the option to franchise it and make sure that no one else got to even come close to touching it uh, granted it did take away our first round pick um, the way that we had the draft set up this year was a little bit different than the way we've done it in previous seasons um, we had one tier we had one tier one uh, one tier two two tier threes two tier fours a tier five uh, a mega slot and then three free picks and you had 11 free point picks uh, free points to spend on your free picks um, so depending on how well you spent your points you could end up with uh, you know a few a few extra OU mons or a few tier one uh, mons if you chose uh, picking a lower tiered mega does grant you back either a point or two points so we had some megas that were sitting in the, the extra point category some you know like the the tier one megas such as uh, Gardevoir, Lopunny uh, the the extremely powerful megas didn't grant you any points back at all because obviously you're not taking a handicap when you take a, an overpowered mega um, but we did end up getting a point back and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more down the road but I thought that Victini was a really good choice to franchise right off the bat just because it, it is versatile and it is something that you don't necessarily gain a lot of information right off the bat. Like I can run a mix set. Whatever I choose to do, it, my opponent has to figure it out before you know you can just throw them on in there and uh, try and counter me. Uh, so our second pick uh, was something that I was really excited to, to use. Um, I will say I got a little bit of a snipe uh, ahead of me. I, I, did, I had originally wanted Mega Gyarados and I was gonna go after it second round. Uh, my boy James with the uh, New York Metagross went ahead and picked that up ahead of me. Uh, but Gengar was a mon that was sitting there for me. Uh, it was one that I had originally looked at uh, just for my team core in general. It hits a really good speed tier. Its special attack is amazing. Um, it has again, you know, pretty good stab moves, uh, a decent amount of coverage, um, but as far as um, general coverage goes, it is it is it is an, it is an amazing Pokemon, and uh, it can do a lot of work. We can run Destiny Bond. We can run uh, with Curse Body. You know, it, it's not as versatile as it used to be. Uh, Levitate was a really overpowered ability because we could throw this thing in against earthquakes or anything that could really threaten. Uh, Victini originally, but um, you know, it is what it is. Cursed Body is not an awful ability by itself. It's not as good as Levitate, but um, it's it's not a it's not a bad ability by any means. Uh, stab Sludge Bomb, Stab Shadow Ball. Um, those are going to be the main moves we're running off. We can run Energy Ball, uh, Dazzling Gleam if we need to. Uh, maybe one week week we'll, uh, we'll rock the Will O Wisp set, and try and cripple some things. Uh, we, we have a versatile moveset that we can run on Gengar if we need to. Uh, I think we're going to stick with the nickname Morty uh, throughout the season. We'll see how it goes. I've got a couple of nicknames for Gengar that I want to use. Uh, but that goes back to Gen 2. One of the original, well, not so original, but one of the best gym leaders in my opinion. Uh, for round 3, I decided to dive down and pick up Hariyama. I really enjoyed using Conkeldur in the GPL 
and I felt like this was more of like a bargain version of Conkeldur. Uh, granted, it doesn't get as much coverage as Conkeldur does, but it does have access to thick fat and guts. Uh, I believe it also gets Shear Force or Iron Fist, one or the other. Uh, I might be might be speaking out of out of turn here. But I figured that this would be a good pick. Uh, its HP stat is through the roof. It does gonna, it is gonna allow us to live a hit and maybe fire off something. It's gonna be a little more powerful, uh, kind of kind of venge kill or at least wall break in some capacity. And uh, learning from my mistakes in the GPL, I did not want to have a team that was devoid of stealth rock. So I did go ahead and with my next pick, I picked up Party Croc the Crocodile. Um, again, this is another Mon that we can have as a versatile Mon. Uh, we can lead it with a Choice Scarf, uh, we can go Intimidate Moxie, uh, we can use Stealth Rocks, we can use an Offensive Set, we can even use a Defensive Set if we choose. Um, it's it's going to be a Mon that's going to put in work in numerous, numerous capacities for us, just because it, it really does pull its weight as far as a Defensive Mon, as far as an Offensive Mon. Again, we go back to that coverage where... Um, Granted, its speed is not the best, but if we if we have a determined job for it, we can kind of creep a little bit or give it bulk to live a certain hit, and then let it let it do its job uh, further on down the road. I did want a cleric as well, and you know a fairy type, so I did go with Lorgis. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Twinkularis is not not a real word. Word. I wish it were, but it's supposed to be what light streaming through leaves looks like i don't know why this immediately jumped to mind when i thought florges but um that's that's what we're gonna roll with uh spadef is through the roof um, so we will probably use this as a specially defensive wall uh, just to kind of counteract some of the the threats to the team we will be able to throw this in there um it's not cored very well with the rest of the team as far as we have right now but it was sitting there it is it does have access to defog now, so that gives us a defogger just to help clear the way for Victini. Um, it's a, it's going to be a good mod for us. Uh, not a huge amount of versatility. Uh, we can wish pass, heal bell, cleric, uh, all that good stuff. But you know what Floor just does, it does well, which is you know as as nice as it, as it is to have mods that have versatility. It is also good to have mods that do one thing really well. Uh, moving on down the road. It is important to note that we drafted in this slot, we drafted Flygon, uh, but after the draft wrapped up, I really didn't see a need for Flygon on my team. It would have been nice to have, but I really wanted a physically defensive wall. Um, so I reached out to Coward Kanto and I was like, hey, is there any way, maybe, just maybe, uh, you'd be interested in trading your Gliger for my Flygon? And to my chagrin, he did say yes. So we now have Pinch Pinch the Gliger. Hypercutter is going to be nice, but not nearly as nice as Immunity. There are so many coaches in this league that love to rely on Toxic, so it's nice to have an Immunity right off the bat. Um, that coupled with Florges, maybe we can U-turn out into that and get some heal bells off if we need to, uh, pass some wishes around. Uh, but it is going to be nice to have them on that resist Toxic right off the bat. Uh, we have that in Gengar, but Gengar is not one of those mods that you can comfortably switch in just because it is very frail. Um, so this is going to be useful we can make it a little specially defensive to where you know if, if an opponent wants to pack hp ice we can live one and then do what we need to do uh, again kind of like floor just you know it might not be extremely versatile um, but what it does do it does really well it can reliably get off hazards or it can remove hazards um, live a hit maybe even roost back up just sustain itself sustainability is glagger's middle name um, but yeah, I was really thrilled to get this in a trade, especially for Flygon, just because my team was already, not, I don't want to say, I would i would say that it was higher, there was a higher priority placed on speed than there was bulk, and you know, that's my playstyle anyway, but I kind of want to make sure that I have some sort of balance if need be, just in, in the odd scenario that we do find ourselves um, needing some bulk and needing needing to be able to sustain ourselves in a long-term match uh, it would be nice to have Gliger and Florges so those two guys I, I think are really gonna put in support for us next up I was really thrilled to see this still on the board um, it's gonna be Rotom regular form 
this is really cool. I saw Angelina use it really well last season, um, and I don't think that I'm going to be able to use it in quite that capacity, but I do like the idea of having a uh, Volt Switch coupled with a little bit of U-Turn on my team, just because it will give us some switch initiative if I can make the right reads. Um, we also have U-Turn uh, in Gliger, which, you know, it's okay. It can do the job when it needs to, but uh, we can run Trick on this, we can run Wisp, we can run... Uh, I'm not sure if this regular form gets defog or not. I don't believe it does. But um, if it does, we have another defogger here. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be something that's versatile for us, uh, and that seems to be the name of the game for us. Uh, moving along, I had my last pick. Uh, I decided, you know, since everyone else had grabbed Megas near the beginning of the draft, uh, there weren't too many teams that were still in need of Megas. And I was kind of, I was kind of asking around and being like, "Hey, what are you guys going for? Uh, you you want to share, you want to share information?" And no one was going after this mega for me, um, or the the mega that I had in mind. So I decided to wait and leave it to my very last pick of the uh, the tiered picks. So I drafted Mega Absol, and I love this mon. Uh, when X and Y came out, and they had the original the the original Mega Pokemon. This is the one that I chose to use the majority of the time just because it is so crazy good. And again, you know, uh, versatility, versatility, versatility. Um, we can run a special on this. We can run Wisp. We can run uh, Parish Song if we so choose. Um, we get into a position where, yeah, I don't know, maybe we're in 1v5 on a Mon that um, has stalling ability. Say it's Toxapex. Um, we can go in there, click Parish Song, and bounce around th for three turns and then take care of it um, but we can run a special set we can run uh, cycle cut if we need to for coverage it has a wide wide move pool uh, it's attack stat is crazy good uh, so is its speed uh, special attack is okay um, it's not as great compared to attack but it can do the job as long as it's a, a, a move that is super effective like you don't want to necessarily just be thrown off special attacking moves with this mon unless they're gonna hit hard but um, it definitely will do the job that we needed to do I am so excited um, to be able to use this next mon as much as I love Mega Absol uh, this thing was somehow still sitting on the board waiting for me to draft it when my turn came around uh, following the first round of the, the free picks so the way this worked um, because we drafted Mega Absol we got a point back into our free free points uh, each coach started off with one or one with 11 and because we got that extra one back we had a total of 12 OU or tier one mons were uh, six points so with this I can go ahead and just, you know take a tier one right off the bat this mon uh, as you can see like our team is very offensive uh, that's gonna kind of be the name of the game as far as the season is concerned just play really really well uh, try and make the right reads and put ourselves in a position where we don't need to do a whole lot of guessing um, so Cartana uh, paper plane we're gonna try and put this thing into a position where it can it can single-handedly wipe out teams um, just the fact that we have it I think is gonna force coaches to prepare for it it's spadef is absolute butterscotch um, we were actually making a joke about it in the uh, in the discord chat asking you know what doesn't two hit KO or at least you know what doesn't one hit KO with uh, hidden power fire most definitely does two hit KO and I think someone found that Bonsly 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 um, doesn't doesn't two hit KO with HP fire uh, well, I'll have to calc that but yeah so if we go up against Bonsly or Bonsly you know we should be okay we don't have to worry about HP fire and there's no way you're gonna see me running an Akaberry on this um, just because you know, HP fire, it, it could hit us with something that we resist four times and it, it has a good chance to kill us. Uh, but I am super excited to use this. I will have to play it well. Uh, a little bit of bulk might be thrown into this at some point, but we will see. It's going to be interesting. This is a viable scarf threat. We can also throw it in against something that it naturally outspeeds and just go for a free attack, trying to get a, a timid beast boost uh, or a jolly beast boost would be more, more appropriate. Uh, but yeah, I was super excited to see this sitting, and my excitement only grew throughout the rest of the free picks because everything that I wanted was sitting there. Um, 
Suicune was also available, and because I had some some three points sitting there, I was able to go and get Suicune from tier two, uh, which left me with I believe two or three points. I'm not certain. All I know is that I had enough for one more pick, which is all I needed. Um, so Suicune is going to be another defensive wall for us, or you know, again, I can say it once, I can say it a million times. Versatility. Uh, we can run this as an offensive sweeper. We can run the Calm Mind, uh, the stall set. It's really going to be up to us, depending on what we need to do on any given week, um, just just to kind of figure out where we want to go with this game. Because the only thing that's going to handicap what I've drafted is the the, the coach that's using it. Um, and I say that, you know, I say that not to gloat, but I say that as like, a, oh my gosh. No pressure because it's a really good team, and the only way that I can I can screw this up is if I play it really really poorly. If I choose not to prep well, um, that's gonna be what gets in our way. And last but definitely not least, uh, I do have the Wallflower himself, uh, Kick, uh, Kikleon, Kekleon, whatever you want to call it. I love this mon. This mon has access to Protean which is the exact reason why Greninja is banned. Now granted, it does not have the move pool that Greninja does, nor the, the sheer attacking power, but we can play mind games aplenty with this mod. Um, the Shadow Sneak, Drain Punch, Power Up Punch, um, Sucker Punch combo can be incredibly frustrating for opponents to deal with. Uh, but again, it does go back to you know coaching, coaching, coaching all the way we have to make sure that we're making the right reads we're making the right plays we're going to have to predict carefully we're going to have to bring this thing in an opportunity where it has a chance to succeed and make it look good otherwise you know it can be can be something that can hinder us but that is going to be the maryland blue crabbies roster for uba season four free agency does not start yet i don't know right off the bat if there's anything that i even want to think about getting rid of um, y'all can let me know in the comments below uh, question of the day is what do you think is the best Pokemon that we were able to draft with this season um, personally I was I was really excited uh, to have Cro uh, Crocodile sitting on the board that late when I when I had a chance to draft it um, I was also toying with the idea of Nidoqueen at that time and Seismitoad and I just really like the idea of Crocodile because I've seen it used in League, I've seen other coaches use it well, and um, I'm, I'm really excited to get to use it. That and Cartana. I've used Cartana a little bit on the ladder, but never with a huge amount of success, so I'm excited to see how we'll be able to use it in League. Uh, we have a few familiar faces. I've used um, Suicune before, I've used Gligar before, and I've used, obviously, Victini before, but just as a, an, an announcement, we do have Gengar as one of our Z users, we have Crocodile as one of our Z users, and we have Kikleon as our Z users for this season. So that means any given week we can throw a Z Crystal, uh, any Z Crystal on one of those three Mons, and we can kind of go from there. We can have a party in the bay if that's what we choose to do. Um, but this that's going to be about it for this video guys i appreciate you sticking around and watching the whole thing i'm sorry that it's not going to be a little bit longer i know the, the gpl recap was i think it was close to 30 minutes but um unfortunately i just don't have that kind of time right now um but this is adam coach of the maryland blue crabbies i will see y'all for week one next week cue the outro